This video is brought to you by Quid, a mobile sticker and prize collecting app filled with superhero characters. Stay until the end of the video to learn more and help support Really Freakin' Clever. So, uh, in case you couldn't already tell from that footage, this is the greatest game ever made. Over the long and storied course of this show, I've made episodes of Really Freaking Clever with varying intents. Most episodes deal with finding specific game mechanics that inform what makes some of the industry's most beloved games so, well, beloved. Others deal with overall game design goals that wind up influencing the course of entire genres. And I've even done a few episodes on games that overall probably aren't considered that great, but still contain ideas that I think are worthy of recognition on their own. But this episode is going to be a bit different. This game isn't perfect, this game isn't bad. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction is the definition of a 7 out of 10 game, but it's a title that I believe is far too forgotten when compared to others in the comic book genre, and is one particular design decision that I believe has yet to be topped by any superhero that isn't a green, mean fighting machine. Luigi, you don't count, please get out of this video. So first things first, since this game isn't entirely all that well known, what exactly is the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction? Well, you know how everyone and their mother has been clamoring for a proper follow-up to the open world antics of Spider-Man 2, and that's why everyone's so pumped for this new Insomniac game on the PS4? Well, uh, sorry to break it to you all, but this is the Hulk game that beat those Ratchet and Clank lovers to the punch. In like, 2005. Now, I know these games were being developed around the same time, so any direct inspirations from Spider-Man 2 would have come late in the process, but Ultimate Destruction builds upon a lot of what made that wall-crawling adventure so great. Spider-Man 2 as a giant city, Hulk as a giant city and a decently sized desert town with a few military bases thrown in for good measure. Spider-Man 2 has a few side quest races and a few quirky pizza deliveries. Hulk has a lot of side quest races, a mini game where you have to hang glide from a giant inflatable gorilla, and golf with cars. It's amazing. This game's filled to the brim with fun, creative stuff to do and smash around as the Hulk. And that's a major reason that I love this game so much. However, the actual clever aspect of this game may actually be something that it leaves out. You see, something that all great superhero games have in common is how they're able to distill the unique superpowers of these iconic characters into fun game mechanics. Spider-Man 2 is beloved because of its physics-based web-slinging and its dynamic civilians in need system. Batman Arkham Asylum is considered a masterpiece because it really makes you feel like the Dark Knight, hiding just out of view of wandering thugs and smoothly taking them out either one by one or by using a closed combat system that's mwah, beautiful. These games, for most of their runtime, embody their protagonists in a way that's both fun and empowering. However, it seems that when it comes to more open games such as these, again, with Spider-Man 2 having all of Manhattan, and the Arkham games expanding from the Asylum to a walled-off portion of Gotham City to all of freaking Gotham City, these games are so large that the developers don't seem to have faith that a single strong mechanic can sustain them. Which is why, seemingly for the sake of variety, Spider-Man 2 has instances of having to fight enemies indoors or chase after some Catwoman ripoff that moves way slower than Spidey does. This is also why many people prefer the original Arkham Asylum in comparison to its follow-up games. They had to keep adding more and more features and twists onto its absurdly strong foundation, and that unfortunately winds up distracting from that foundation in the first place. Variety for variety's sake, creating instances where the main feature actually becomes a hindrance, appears to be the real supervillain plaguing these games. But the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction? Let's just use a little bit of a visual aid for a second, shall we? Please don't copyright strike me, Marvel. Every single main mission in Ultimate Destruction is built around the idea that smashing through things while running around as the Hulk is fun, and offers just enough of a twist on that basic idea to keep things interesting the entire game. Blow up three generators around the city, steal this computer part and bring it back to the lab without it getting blown up, do a looping circuit around this building to keep the tanks from taking it down. The game's design encourages you to always be on the move, either towards specific targets or leaving a path of chaos as you flee from danger. 
There's no stopping to take it slow, no random stealth sections, or situations where you're required to defeat all the enemies so you wind up bored tracking down one little remaining soldier while nothing else is going on. This game takes every possible situation that could ruin the flow of running around as the Hulk and chucks it out the window. Even when the game starts to throw more and more super-powered or robot enemies at you to heighten the difficulty, there's always more regular soldiers to knock out of your way, or helicopters to randomly throw projectiles at. The game never, ever, ever lets you stop feeling like the Hulk is powerful. This game destroys the concept of slowing down or just having variety for variety's sake, and instead lets every change of the game's pace never stray too far from what the player really wants. For the Hulk to smash. As gaming technology grows more and more advanced, the urge to make games as absolutely fleshed out as possible is a strong one. And in many cases, those urges should be pursued and fully explored to keep pushing the genre forward. However, sometimes a game just needs a single great mechanic and focus, and The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction proves that if you can nail that and keep it interesting throughout, sometimes one smashing good adventure is all you need. And yeah, it's not a perfect game, but I'll be damned if it isn't the most consistently fun superhero game ever made. And that, well, I've got to admit that that is really freaking clever. Hey, remember how I said that this video was brought to you by Quid? Well, this is just a more in-depth reminder that this video was brought to you by Quid. Quid is the best way on iOS and Android to collect cool stickers, cards, and toys, featuring some of the best heroes and villains in both the Marvel and DC universes. Look, superheroes, just like we talked about in the video. You can buy them, trade them, do whatever you want with them, with new content being added daily. So click the link in the description and check out the Quid app today. Hey there, did you enjoy this video? Why not hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and check out some of my social media links down in the description. They're all there. I say funny stuff on Twitter sometimes, so check it out. Also, I live stream. Check out the Twitch link for that. I play video games on there. You guys have heard of video games, right?